Welcome back, everyone, to Hearts of Iron 4 as we continue this playthrough of Kaiserreich as the nation of Austria. We are well into Russian territory and we are expecting eventually to win here. Ekaterinburg is now the capital uh, of the Russian Empire or the Russian state, I should say. And we are moving fast toward that capital. Uh, overall situation looks like this. Uh, significantly more casualties. Well, about a million more for us than the other side. But we're pushing in on a three to one manpower advantage at this point. I think Italy will fall before too long. Russia will eventually fall. It's just a lot of ground to have to cover. But you can see how little territory Italy has left at this point. I may send some... Uh, some divisions over there just to help push that along a little bit. All right, I've launched an attack. We're going to try and make a move to take Milan, and it looks like it's working. He's only got one division there. He may try to shift some over, but I don't think they're going to get there in time. All right, we're one step closer, so that helps a little bit. Um, going to continue working on rubber and oil processing to help boost that a little bit. Long-term projects, as I mentioned last episode, things like nuclear reactor and rocket engines, uh, and then a lot of short-term projects as well. All right, I'm drawing a new objective point for my uh, army groups on the Eastern Front, and we're gonna create a bulge right here in the line that's not only gonna take his capital, but is also going to allow us to very easily encircle and cut off any divisions that are here in conjunction with what the Ottomans are doing in the south. Well, it seems at this point that the Russians aren't really even defending the center anymore. I don't think they have the divisions to do it. So uh, we're pretty much marching unopposed towards Ekaterinburg, which is kind of interesting. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, I think that might be enough to end the war with the Russians. They're 88% toward capitulation. We're going to have them cut off in the south. We're going to start destroying divisions. He's already not really covering the line. So I'm really, I'm just going to pretty much make a beeline for the capital at this point with everybody I've got. And let's see how close that gets us. It's October 1941, so we're just now getting into uh, when this war was heating up historically on the Eastern Front. I mean, it started a couple months earlier historically, but not by much. All right, he's really just not even able to do anything right here. Let's see what happens when we take Ekaterinburg. He's at 92%. I don't know if... We'll get 8% toward capitulation from taking his capital. But we'll see how close that gets us. Gets us to 97. We're darn close now. And we've got him cut off down here. That's the best part. Let's go ahead and, and completely cut this off. Close this gap. And start destroying divisions over here. There we go. We've got him cut off. There it is. I think Russia's at... No, that's not Russia. That's Muscat. Don't really care about that. That's a win for the Ottomans. This is the Commune of France. They're out now. Okay. That we do want to take some of, if we can. Looks like the Germans are going to take everything in the south. I really would like to know what the uh, situation looks like as far as production goes, but I'm not sure I'm going to get to see that. Wow, I don't have the points to really take much either. We're going to have to pass for now. Dang, Germany's got all the points. All right. So what can I take? I don't really, see, I don't really border anything is kind of the problem here. But we do want to at least take something out of all this. Get a little bit there. We've still got quite a few points. How about Savoy? Oh, we did. We already said Savoy. Nice. No, I don't really want Nice. Although that would give me a Mediterranean port. All right. Germany got 27 states. I was only able to take one. 
commune of France has been annexed. So now we have the French Republic over there. Uh, all I got was this one little piece right here. Savoy really, really wasn't even worth it um, considering. But that's where we're at for now. So we'll continue the march on the Russians and see what happens there. I feel like I will have earned a little more of the share of that victory. Archangelis is his new capital. So we're going to start pushing to get up there while we simultaneously look to destroy these divisions over here. All right. So it looks like uh, the war with Russia is over. So now is going to be our opportunity. You can see the points we've got. This is all about production for me. This is where can I take things that are going to allow me the opportunity to get production value that I don't currently have. So I want all of this region right down here for sure. Beyond that, there's some nice territory up in here that I wouldn't mind having. A lot of this is the, um, the chromium production that I'm not going to get elsewhere. So I'm just kind of grabbing all of those states that allow me to, to get some of that production. Oh, there's a ton of it up here. These are going to be all over the place as far as um, defending goes later, but I don't really care too much about all that. Oh, there's a nice amount of steel and aluminum production. There's some production there. There's aluminum there. This is really going to help my economy. Uh, a bit off more than I can actually take, though. All right, now we can grab all this stuff out here. Uh, not that much. Ukraine's got to get their pieces too, you know. Oh, look at that steel production right there. Oh, I can't get that. I actually would rather have that first. That's a lot of steel production right there. All right, I don't think we're going to get a whole lot more. Oh, there's some right there I'd like to have. I'm going to have little pieces all over the place. I'd like to try and connect as much of it as I can. There's some oil up there, but I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, I'd really like to be able to connect this if I can. There we go. That's ah, too much. Okay, that's not too bad. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see where that puts the world after all of that. It's a lot to calculate. All right, so there's still two wars going on. Do I actually control? No, I don't control all that. That's, that's just a country that has an almost identical color to me which makes it really interesting. All of this becomes the German Empire. So Russia ceases to exist, basically. Uh, we control some territory down here. My goodness. So what's left? We've got the British-German War, uh, which we're going to have to conquer Britain to win. Uh, Italy's a part of that one as well. Uh, and then there's British-German War II, which uh, also involves the co-prosperity co sphere. Um, but... We're going to regroup and uh, take a look at where we're at as far as trade goes now because we've got a whole lot more um, production that we'll eventually be able to bring into things and uh, trade. But uh, it'll take some time. You know, We're not really extracting all of it right now. There, now it's showing up. So now you can see the difference now in terms of what steel production we have. Look at all that chromium we've got going on. Oh, this is beautiful. Boy, our economy is transformed by that territory that we've taken from the Russians. Uh, that's huge moving forward. Still don't have a lot of territory in our homeland here, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, we've brought our Air Force back. We've got about a thousand planes that we're going to put to use over here in Italy. I'm also moving all of those divisions that were fighting in Russia 
uh, and they're going to make their way over here to the Italian front, front and they're going to be what allows us to finish off the Italians. Uh, we're bringing in uh, over 70 divisions to fight. 18 are going to go this way toward Turin. The rest are going to push down toward the south, and here they come. We'll give them a little bit of time for their organization to build back up after uh, their movement. And it uh, seems like ever since we knocked Russia out, things have been bogged down a little bit as far as the computer goes. But here they go. Uh, the vast majority of them are on the, on the line now. And let's make that final push into Italy. Finish them off, and then it'll be all about the Brits after that. We'll swing around. Oh, Chicago fell. Let's see what's happening in the U.S. with all of that. Looks like the United States of America has pushed into Georgia, into Tennessee, into western Kentucky. Uh, they've taken most of Illinois. I think the freedom and democracy is going to win over there. So um, we got some free military factories here. I oh, really need to get caught up on support equipment. All right, we're about to destroy some divisions over here. We've done that. The collapse of Italy is on. We are out of manpower again, as we've had the chance to replenish our divisions. Italy's got a long way to go before collapse, though. A lot of high, high value targets in this area that they could still control. And now that you can see that we're starting to break through on this side now, Things are starting to collapse for him on his western front as well, and I think we're going to be able to make a move here and take Turin. Looks like there was a naval battle here. Um, we sank one British convoy. Nothing major, but every little bit helps. I think Turin has fallen. We're just trying to move our troops in. Triumph of the French exiles. The Italians are done. There it is. Italy's out. We just got to gobble up the last remaining territory now. And now we turn all of our attention onto the British. Who really haven't been touched. I mean, they've lost a million and a half men in the war. I shouldn't say they haven't been touched. So Guatemala has capitulated. Uh, we're going to start moving our air power over here now. Uh, start looking for opportunities to deal with the British by air over the channel. Start to take supremacy in both the sea and air in that area. We're going to have to move some, uh, some more naval forces up there. I think our Navy's already up there, though. Sank another Royal Navy ship, the RNS Union, a dreadnought. We also brought down five naval bombers. A lot of these naval battles are ending without anything happening, but if we can start taking air and naval supremacy, it makes it a little easier to get a landing force across to end the war. So um, that's kind of what we're after long term, although I don't personally plan on being the ones to launch the, the land invasion. As I'm completely out of manpower, I want to let somebody else do that, but I'll certainly contribute my air and naval forces to making it happen. All right, we're dividing up Italy now. I very much would like to take Campania, because uh, that's got 47 uh, aluminum and 44 steel production. That's really all I want. Plus, it gives me a nice little spot for a naval base there. If I get that, I'm pretty content to not take anything else. So we're going to let Legionnaire Italy take most of it. Right now, I just need some manpower more than anything. We've got another naval battle. Let's see what happened out here. Oh, my. At the loss of one destroyer, we have taken out four battleships, including, it appears, is that his flagship? I don't know. Um, two cruisers, four escort cruisers, seven destroyers, and nine planes. Fantastic. Take down that British Navy. No more rule Britannia. Speaking of the Navy, we need to start working on 
research in our Navy. Uh, we're going to start with carriers, I think. Okay, looks like the invasion has begun, and we're a part of that with the, our Navy protecting what's happening. Bunch of new things happening in the war. Hungary has joined. But the main thing right now is we want to see this landing be successful. As soon as the landing's successful, I'll send some troops over there to help out. And it looks like that's about to happen. We'll send our first army. And there's the landing. So let's go ahead and send the first army over there to help out. Hopefully they'll be able to get some supplies going. There we go. Now they got a base of supply. London is in German hands. We may not even have time to get our troops up there as fast as the Germans may do this, but I'm certainly going to do my best to try and get in on the action. As things spread out a little bit, they're taking Ipswich, moving on Cambridge and Oxford, going to move up into the Midlands here soon, Leicester and Birmingham. Here come our troops crossing now, so they will get involved. Excellent. Austrian troops on the ground in Britain. Going to be a little bit of a limited supply until we can move further into the country. Okay, I think we've reached the place where we're going to start having the breakout. Everybody's fully supplied now that we have enough of the east part of Britain. I don't know how much of the country we'll have to take. I would imagine at the very least we're going to have to move up into northern England or maybe even to Scotland. Probably take Edinburgh and Glasgow before we're at a place where we'll have enough to declare victory. Leeds is the new capital, which is interesting. Birmingham's the second largest city after London. Let's see where we're at at this point. We're almost halfway there, so yeah. Um, take Plymouth, take Cardiff and Swansea, Wrexham. Take Leeds, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham. That might be enough to get this done. We may not have to move as far as York and Newcastle. Let's see what happens after we take Leeds. We've already got Birmingham. About to take Liverpool and Manchester. So this is some of the largest, most populated parts of the country here. Still completely out of manpower. He's 69% toward capitulation. We'll go ahead and watch this to completion. We're almost at the place where uh, we might see an end to war in another episode or two. Be nice to get back to a time of peace in the new world order before we see kind of where things where things will go from here. Here goes Leeds. It's slowed down a little bit as we uh, try to take Liverpool and Leeds. Obviously, uh, they're going to be a little more defended. We're also more spread out. Let's go ahead and move on Wales. Let's conquer Wales while we're over there. We're about to take Leeds. Liverpool and Leeds have fallen. It's not quite enough. So we may indeed have to move into Newcastle. I don't know. If we take Cardiff and Swansea and maybe Newcastle, we might not have to go into Scotland. Glasgow's the capital now. I'll be there in a few weeks. Can't wait. Three and a half weeks, we fly to London. Four nights in London, a couple nights in York, and then on to Scotland for a week. In the meantime, oh yeah, we're super close, 96%. I think if we take Newcastle, that'll do it. If not, we'll have to take Edinburgh. Barcelona has fallen. Yeah, we haven't really been paying attention to what's happening in Spain. All the Spanish Civil War is over. The Kingdom of Spain wins it. So, man, a lot happening in this episode. The Russians have fallen, the Italians have fallen... Spanish Civil War is over. The American Civil War is about to be over. Yeah, it's getting there. And we're about to conquer Britain. There it is. 
All right. So here's the question now. What, if anything, are we going to be able to take? There's not a lot really worth taking. There's not a lot of production value here. Um, honestly, as much as I would love to have it, it's just more trouble than it's worth. I'm not going to really take anything in Britain. So Britain, of course, shows as a part of Dominion of Canada, which means they're now, once again, uh, always, or as always, they are back under uh, their king, Albert I. So he's not going by George VI. Uh, this is the same guy. His, his given, the name that he went by in life was Albert, or Bertie, uh, to his family. Uh, but he went by George VI in honor of his father, George V. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see he's going by Albert on here. Um, so that really calms things down. We are still at war, uh, but the war now is a war with Asia. And it's not really a place where we're probably going to do a lot to get involved, but it means we're going to remain in a state of war for the time being, and it's not going to be um, a quick fix to end it. Though we do have territory... Oh, look at this. We're actually dealing with a combat situation over here. Are we at war with these guys? I think we are. Trans, trans Amur. So we're going to have to send our troops over now along this huge, huge front of territory that we actually control. Um, I think we'll make it simple and just put our armies right here. So the United Kingdom, which now exists once again, has joined the Entente. So they have been restored, but they are not any longer a socialist nation. They're a part of the Entente, which means they're going to jump in now on our side uh, of this war. Or at least that is what I expect will happen. But we'll see. Actually, they, they were a part of the war against the UK. They're not a part of this war in Southeast Asia. Uh, actually, it's East Asia, I guess, because we've got all of this too. So I'm moving my armies into position. You can see my divisions are starting to arrive. Uh, so we'll start making a move now uh, with the fighting over there. we got to stabilize things. Um, I'm going to build some more synthetic refineries so we can get our oil production production up some more. And I want to I want to work on infrastructure as well. So we've completed our first research on improved carrier hull. Um, I'm going to go ahead on advanced heavy hull. It's only going to take 66 days because of the things that we've been able to research. Um, my national focus has been on construction engineering, but I think I'll go ahead now and switch it back over. Uh, we can't do anything over there. I don't really think there's much we can do at all as long as we're at war with any of this stuff. Yeah, we have to be at peace to even do any of those things. So I guess for now, we'll just continue one of these continuous focuses. We'll do naval production because we're going to start ramping up our navy for this war in Southeast Asia. So we're sending our fleet to the Solomons. The fleet doesn't have a lot to it right now, but it will eventually. Uh, nine battleships, four battle cruisers, one cruiser, six escort cruisers, 28 destroyers, 37 subs. And we're just going to send it all to the Solomons and the Bismarck Sea to kind of uh, patrol what's happening there because that's where the, the combat with the Japanese seems to be. Maybe we can cut off their, their troops and their ability to reinforce that position. Okay, because we're focused on our Navy, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start focusing on building up our naval dockyards so we have a, a greater production ability in terms of building that navy so everywhere that we've got naval possibilities we're going to ramp it up as high as we can go with it uh, we've got some over here too oh, nothing over there we now have fighter three that's the uh, B-224. Let's go ahead and start producing those. Uh, we've got a couple of new research slots available to us. Let's go after the 1940 model naval bombers as well. And what else can we do as far as the Navy goes? I'm working on the, the new shell types. 
So it'll give us some real quick boost to what we're doing. I decided to go ahead and start operating. Oh, Uruguay has joined our friendly band of countries. Uh, we're going to operate in this area here just because our range was giving me a hard time. My ships were having a hard time moving a little farther so they can base out of here. And the Japanese are operating here too. So it gives us somewhere to maybe start hunting them a little bit. And we'll add the Celeb Sea as well. Kind of go back and forth between the two. All right, so we're going to start designing uh, a new advanced heavy battleship. Um, don't have a ton of points to be able to do that with right now, but we do have enough to get something done. We've got our fire control system here. We can put aircraft facility, a catapult on the back. That'll give us some surface and sub detection, uh, which every little bit of that helps. We only have 58 Navy experience available right now. Um, I'm gonna put a secondary battery on this thing. It gives us a little more flexibility. So we can kind of do a little bit of everything with these guys. Put another heavy battery, 54. I think that's pretty well going to do it for us. All right. That's the advanced heavy hull mark one. We'll build like four of those to start. And we'll scale back our submarine production for the time being. We've had our first combat with the Japanese Navy and we lost one destroyer but we sank three destroyers and two convoys. Looks like he had mostly escort ships, some subs and destroyers. So, so far, so good there. Uh, as I mentioned, we have started production uh, of our first advanced heavy haul battleship. That's gonna take until August of 1944 to have that produced. So I think what we probably wanna do in the meantime is look for some uh, lighter ships that we can quickly get into the action so we can improve the size of our Navy without having to wait wait for those big capital ships to get into action. Uh, I'm thinking a number of destroyers might be good. We don't have a lot of cruisers either, so let's maybe get some cruisers going as well. We'll, even, we'll probably even just cut back for now on the production of that Navy, uh, of the big ship, uh, in favor of getting some cruisers into the action quicker. Starting to move my first army, uh, 15 divisions strong over here to see if we can't take this territory here in Transnamur. I would very much like to have a naval base and an air base this close to Japan. That could create some really interesting possibilities. And because it borders the Korean empire or the Korean part of Japan's empire. So that gives us an opportunity to fight them there. And it looks like Japan already has troops in Transnamur. So uh, we're going to be fighting them right now. Might have to send some more troops over there in addition to the ones that we've already got. Let me get my Panzer divisions and assign them. Eh, a little too many. That's okay. We've already oh, zoomed in a little too far, isolated and destroyed some Japanese divisions by getting in behind them. Uh, so we're making quick work of this area here. Supply is not good, as one might expect in this part of the world. Uh, so we're certainly having some trouble there. Uh, let's see if we can't move in and take this territory. I haven't done too much by way of intelligence. I really just haven't wanted to waste my civilian factories on that kind of stuff but eventually we'll need to do that uh, we're going to wrap this episode up here in a minute i just want to take a look at the uh, research situation we're working on our next naval bombers once we take this territory and we can uh, get a naval base get some airfields out here then that's going to allow us to move into position with our air force uh, rocket engines are about five months away nuclear reactor is about six and a half seven months away and we continue to do some research on various naval things as well. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. And we will be back in a couple of days with the next episode. Thanks for watching.